Welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Srinivas. In the last session, we discussed about a variables concept. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about a data types. The concept is a data types. First of all, what is a data type? In the declaration of every variable, it is mandatory to specify its data type. If you just look at the syntax of the variable, you will understand, right? Just this is a declaration, right, of a variable, the syntax. Here it is in the declaration of variable, this is identifier and next what is important? The data type is important, data type, the data type and identifier. If you see the example, data type is a integer and variable name is a A, variable name is A and here it is a data type. What is a data type? It is just a representation of data clearly how much memory right is required to allocate and what type of data is allowed to store so these two so will represented by the data type of a specific variable suppose here it is i am declaring a variable a is of type what integer type so here a gets memory allocation at some location at some location this is memory address we already discussed a memory address is a positive integer value positive integer value this is called address right every variable right gets memory allocation and uh, how many bytes required so generally integer occupies two bytes memory integer occupies two bytes memory and here it is once the variable is ready once the variable is ready and what type of data is allowed suppose here it is i am storing minus 13 is a negative integer of course it's an integer so it is allowed and next one some positive integer 17 i am storing it is also allowed but can we store a 34.56 no it will not allow decimal values not allowed simply data type represents two things about a variable first one what type of data is allowed to store and second one how much memory is required to store the data these two things so described by a data type and uh, now how many types are available in a c language okay c here it is data types classified into three types classified into three types this is a classification so first one primitive data types second one derived data types third one user defined data types data types classified into three types first one is a primitive data types second one is a derived data types third one is a user defined data types right here it is a primitive data types integer character float void all these are called primitive data types these are comes under primitive types what are the derived types suppose array string pointer all these are comes under derived data types and what are the user defined data types here it is structure union type def enum all these are comes under user defined data types so once again data types divided into three types classified into three types first one primitive data types integer character float void second one is a derived data types arrays strings pointers functions and all these are comes under derived data types and what are the user defined data types structures unions type def enum so this is called classification and here 
either derived data types or user defined data types. These data types discussion later. So, because arrays we, are, we will discuss very clearly as a concept and strings also we will discuss structures, unions, all these are separate concepts in a C language. So, data types means only just these primitive data types discussion. So, first primitive types again subdivided into so many data types, right. So, what are the types we will see, okay, right. So, subclassification of primitive data types here primitive types only and what are the primitive types once again we are writing integer, next one character, next one float and the last one is a void. So, these are the primitive types and what are the integer types? Integer divided into three types. So, first one is a short second one is a integer, third one is a long. First one is a short type, second one is a integer, third one is a long and again short data type divided into two types, one is a signed short, second one is a unsigned short, integer also, one is a signed integer, second one is a unsigned integer long also, one is a signed long, second one is a unsigned long. So, one integer data type again subdivided into six types. Sir, why sir? Suppose if you want to store one integer value, right, one integer data type is enough, na? why these many data types are required? Why? these many data types are required. Why again classified into six types? Depends on the data we are storing, depends on the size of the data. I just want to store the balance in an account, 5000, 6000, then we choose one particular type. For example, department number, so mostly 30, 10, 20 department numbers are there, right. To store such type of data, so very a less integer is enough. For example, short. Just consider I am trying to store a phone number or I am trying to store account number, right. Such type of things we can store with the help of only long integer types only. Depends on the size of the data, right. We choose a particular data type, right, among available. For example, suppose 10. To store the value 10, 1 byte memory is enough, 1 byte memory. So, always we should go for a data type which occupies only 1 byte memory. Suppose if you are trying to choose a, a data type which occupies 4 bytes, wantedly you are wasting 3 bytes memory in your application, 3 bytes of memory we are wasting. So, that reduces the application performance. So, that is why always depends on the data we are using or we are storing, right, we should select a particular data type. Suppose I am storing a phone number or I am storing an account number, then we should go for the data type which occupies 4 bytes memory because 1 byte memory is not enough to store such type of information. So, this is integer types and how to select a particular type and why they divided one integer type into six subclassifications. And next character, character also divided into two types, one is a signed character and second one is a unsigned character, one is a signed and second one is a unsigned character. And next one float divided into three types, one is a float type, second one is a double and the last one is a long double, last one is long double. So, these are the classifications, wide just it is representing nothing and more clearly once already we discussed and once again we will see more briefly in a functions concept. So, here it is a three types, 
three types again subdivided into so total how many types 11 types so this is called a subclassification of data types subclassification of data types and after that how many bytes each data type occupies how many bytes each data type occupies see suppose if it is a short integer either it is a signed integer or it is an unsigned integer it occupies two bytes memory in the program two bytes memory in the application and suppose if it is an integer right either it is a signed or in unsigned it will occupy two or four bytes sir when it will occupy two bytes and when it will occupy four bytes that is depends on the compiler we are using that once again we will see briefly right when we are going to discuss about a integer data type particularly ok and next long right either signed or unsigned it occupies four bytes memory once again short data type either it is a signed or unsigned again question sir what is a signed and what is unsigned simple signed means using signed data type we can store a positive value or negative value both are allowed in our program always we are not working with only positive values na? in some of the cases definitely there is a requirement will come that we have to store negative values also in that situation we should go for signed type because a signed data type accept both a positive value and a negative value but suppose if it is an unsigned type unsigned strictly it will accept only positive values negative values it will not accept right so this is a difference between signed data type and unsigned data type here it is short either it is a signed or unsigned it occupies two bytes integer either signed or unsigned it occupies two or four bytes depends on the compiler we are using and if it is a long it occupies four bytes character either signed char or unsigned char it will occupy only one byte memory it will occupy only one byte memory and next one float data type occupies four bytes double data type occupies eight bytes long double data type occupies 10 bytes memory in the application right so these are the different sizes occupied by all these uh, classifications ok so this is all about a uh, sub classification of data types and briefly exactly so what are the values we can store into short type character type integer type and flow type one by one we will see in the coming sessions ok so this is the introduction part of a uh, data types thank you thank you for watching for more videos please subscribe to Naresh IT.